Hi everyone, I'd like to show you a project I've been working on on the behalf of Anthony Kakase, well-known person in the Night Rider community. Uh, what we've got here, I'll just um, give you a quick rundown of what we've got before we power things on and get on to the good stuff. We've got ID Janelli uh, Night Rider dashboard components. These are not uh, stock and when I say that they've had some upgrades applied to them. Uh, I'll talk about those later, but over here what we've got is a signal generator which is going to produce a signal to the RPM board and the speedo board so that we can um, produce a speed and engine speed signal without having to have it installed in the car. Uh, we've also got a little speaker here, MP3 player, LCD, ESP32 microcontroller and three variable resistors. Now this one right here uh, from memory represents fuel, oil pressure and this one here is for engine temperature. So we can simulate all the signals that uh, normally go into an engine or uh, into the, produced by the car and we can do that all by adjusting those resistors. So let's just power the whole thing up and we'll see what happens. Now if we turn on the ESP32 it, it's short for Night Industries 2000. So as you could hear on startup it played a random MP3 to, to indicate that the system's starting up which you can turn on and off. Uh, this LCD here has now come to life and it cycles through engine telemetry and changes what it shows on the screen every uh, few seconds. So let us uh, see what happens when we twiddle the, uh, the fuel. Now where's my screwdriver? So what this whole system does is that at different thresholds, whether you're talking about fuel, RPM, oil, pressure, temperature, speed, that sort of thing, random MP3s are played um, when those thresholds are met. So it's kind of like an audio warning system. So. For fuel here, you can see we've got about 170.5 um, estimated miles left. Um, the LCD is telling me, I think it was saying around, if I wait for it to come back around, 67%. So when we get to 50%, we'll hear an audio warning uh, coming out of the MP3 player. So I'm going to adjust this variable resistor and I need to turn it a long way for a small change to happen. So if I start turning this down, you will see the fuel gauge would occasionally update. And I think we're getting closer to 50%. We're on 51, a little bit more. So as you could hear that audio being played as soon as we dropped below 50% of fuel. There's another one set for 25% which um, will then play a, a different bunch of random MP3s. And you can change these as you like by ejecting the SD card out of the MP3 player and copying your own files. And All right, let's change um, tact in a little bit and look at the RP, um, not the RPM, the speedo. So I'll turn on the signal generator and by default I've got it sitting there at 40 mile an hour. So there's two things, well actually four technically, things to keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> the first thing is when we hit 65 miles per hour this voice box is going to change from normal mode to pursuit mode. I'll show you what happens as I increase the speed. So here we are approaching 65-ish. Ready ho, so now it's on pursuit mode and it will stay on pursuit mode until our speed drops um, down again. And you have to go below a certain threshold so, so that it doesn't keep toggling between normal and pursuit all the time, which could get really annoying fast. So we've also got three other speed thresholds, one at 70, 75 and 80 mile an hour respectively. So as the speed increases, as each threshold is reached, 
different sounds that we played. So let's um, hit our 65 mile an hour threshold. Now as we get to 70, So there's the um, one threshold. I must admit this is a good feeling. Wonderful. I feel alive again. So there's um, three speed thresholds by which um, a random MP3 will be triggered. And as you drop down again and then go back up. Now again, to stop um, the MP3 being triggered too often, you have to slow down enough for that threshold that you've just hit to be um, played again. So um, we've also got a similar thing here for um, RPM board too. So I just turn on that. Now we're showing 300 RPM. And as I hit, I think it's about 2300 RPM. Wonderful. I feel alive again. Whoops, and I'm playing the wrong one. Here we go. If I get myself organized a bit better, here we go. Turning up the RPM. Stop that, right this minute. So that MP3 gets triggered when you hit 2300 RPM. Again, that's configurable as well uh, other things we can fiddle now where did i put that screw screwdriver now oh, there it is so let's have a twiddle with the oil pressure now that one is this bar here i think so what will happen here is when the oil pressure gets too low you'll get another mp3 um, being played as well which is handy as if you've got a oil leak or something happening so we'll turn that down and when we get to below 33 psi it will uh, be triggered again this i have need to turn this potentiometer a long way to make a small change 35 we are at. Well, may strike you as hilarious, but not me. Okay, so yeah, we've hit 33 PSI. And over here, we've got the temperature for the engine. So I think I had it set currently at uh, 230 degrees Fahrenheit. So if we exceed that and cook the engine, you can see the bar graph going up system so <clears throat> excuse me yeah we've got a whole bunch of thresholds that are programmable and can be altered um, according to your tastes and the other thing that um, it will do is this LCD is now showing um, the cycling through all the telemetry information so you can see the engine speed we've got currently set at the engine temperature and the oil pressure and these update every two seconds now the reason that these that this is all possible is that um, this ID Ginelli boards can output um, engine and car telemetry in a serial interface which then we can hook into and read the serial stream and do what we like to with it um, so if you want to get a, a system like this, we need to you need to ask iDigenelli for this version of the electronics, and then we can add on cool stuff like this. So the next thing to do is to um, work on the configuration interface, and the plan for that is to be able to connect to the ESP32's Wi-Fi interface and using a web page from your phone or laptop change various settings as you like so uh, that'll be the next thing to work on so i hope you enjoy this video and i'll keep you updated with progress as it comes along cheers